Having internet friends is the same as having IRL friends, but backwards. When you first meet someone IRL, the first thing you see is their face, and the first thing you learn is their name. Maybe you ask where they're from, what their family is like, what they like to do in their free time. You have to figure out if you want to be friends. But if you make friends over the internet, you already have a shared interest. You might learn each other's routines, time zones, different habits, but learning their real name is a big deal. Face reveals are an even bigger deal. The things you usually first learn about someone are some of the last things you learn about someone you meet online. You're making friends, but backwards. Love seeing everyone in the notes say how much they love their online friends and how grateful they are for them. Love seeing love in the world. Yeah, I've gotta say, I love my online friends. You all know who you are. I love you guys so much. I have a knock-knock joke, but I need you to start it for me. <laughs> nice try. I know what you're trying to do, but it won't work. Wink. What were they trying to do? They were trying to get me to start the knock-knock joke, so I'd say knock-knock, they'd say who's there, which would leave me awkwardly holding the bags, because now I'd be the one expected to come up with a good knock-knock joke instead of them. It's a trap! Movie versus book. I adore them both. My absolute favorite take on the book versus the movie is that there's the same story, but the book is how Sophie remembers it, and the movie is how Howl tells it. How could you leave this in the notes? Excellent addition. Actually, this makes the childification of Michael in the movie when he's 15 in the book really funny. Sophie, a 20-ish year old woman from a fantasy land where getting married at 16 or 17 does not seem to be unusual. Yes, this is a young man who is almost an adult. Howl, a man in his late 20s from our world. This is a baby, and he does baby things. I will not be moving to Tumblr because the very act of looking at that website makes me feel like I just walked in on all my little cousins setting up some homemade board game they invented with really stupid rules. Reblog to come play this stupid homemade board game we're all making! Oh my god, it is exactly like that! I don't know if this is a good question, but bananas are like weird because they are a berry, which if you think about it, most berries are not berries. So are you a banana, a strawberry, which is a rose somehow, or are you an avocado, which is also a berry, or just a blueberry? I have no idea how to answer this. I am very confused. <laughs> Sorry about the last question, it was to prove that you're a cool blueberry. Now actual question. Is the voice you do when recording the Tumblr stuff your real voice or a character voice? Either way, it is really cute and I hope you have a wonderful everything. <laughs> yep, that's pretty much my regular reading voice. Just with a touch of extra performance energy, if that makes sense. Sometimes you might hear me slip into a nasally papyrus voice whenever a skeleton is on screen. Or the child voice I used to use for Frisk, or Kara, or poor impressions of accents whenever possible. But yeah, that's my real voice for the most part. I read that capsaicin makes your mouth feel like it's burning because it increases your nerve sensitivity to heat, and menthol works by doing the same thing to cold. So if I eat a habanero pepper and then chew a bunch of breath mints, they'll each other out and I'll be fine. Hey, guess what hellfire tastes like? Fun fact! The nerve endings for ouch, too hot, and ouch, too cold are different, which means that they can both be activated at once without canceling out. Rip OP. <laughs> oh no, that sounds terrible. No, but Tumblr is just what human beings are like when just allowed to be. Middle school class on a school trip energy mixed with Neolithic village around the fire at dusk energy mixed with hippie commune energy, mixed with archaic Greek oral epos energy, mixed with, you are not hiding this in the tags, non-capitalism with left folklore, Tumblr things. Can you read or speak Hebrew? To a very limited degree, yes. I know how to speak many words and phrases, and I can haltingly read words as long as they're written with vowel markings, but that doesn't mean I can hold a full conversation with anyone in Hebrew or necessarily fully comprehend what I'm reading. So technically, yes. Practically, no. Here from YouTube, it's the final brain cell. 
Do 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 do. I now understand why people don't want to tell others about their Tumblr account. I'm sure I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. I love when flowers close in the evening. Like good night, girl. I love you. Sleep tight. Hello. It is time for my favorite fact. Which is that sometimes when the flowers close, there is a little bee inside, spending the night all cozy and safe in his little nook. Specifically, male squash bees do this in squash flowers. Look at a field of squash or pumpkins at night, and there are little guys snoozing in there. This knowledge brings me such joy that I must share it with the world! <laughs> That's so cute! Tumblr added another secret feature. If you make a post and just type gullible, it turns into a different message. Tell me which one you got. Gullible! This is so fucked up. How could you do this to me, OP? No, no, you just have to do the word by itself without any punctuation. Gullible. Not once, but twice. I am betrayed. I'm like if Caesar was a lesbian. I love villains that are the reverse of the idea that absence of love makes you evil. Villains that love to the point of paranoia and obsession. Villains whose love for someone corrupts them. Love being used for awful, evil things. Using love to justify horrific actions. Anything that breaks down the toxic idea that people who don't feel love are monsters, and those who feel love are always pure and heroic and morally right. Okay, actually, genuine tip for new Tumblr users, if you see a post you like and want to reblog, but there's a bad, annoying, added on bit in the reblog chain, feel free to just reblog that post straight from OP or the last person who knew how to find their business. Or just mock the edition. That usually works. Or just mock the edition. That usually works. Why? Why would you hurt my feelings? Aww. Holy heck, I love Tumblr. I can make claims like, I'm the absolute goddess of chocolate pudding, and no one will bat an eye. Heck, they'd go along with it and I'd be like, this bowl of pudding has now been blessed to be one of the sweetest things you ever tasted. Haha, <laughs> yep, Tumblr is crazy, but not in the bad way. It's crazy in the best way. I love it. And yeah, getting more followers lately, which means more random asks. Yay! How did years of quoting Tumblr screenshots from other sites not get me to join Tumblr, but like two weeks of watching your videos got me to say, fuck it, you're running out of shit to quote, better start making my own. I don't know why I didn't think of making reading Tumblr videos so much sooner. I've been lurking on this site for like five plus years, but hey, better late than never. Anyway, just because I saw a different permutation of this meme, I had to share literally my favorite version of it. Fishes crawling out of the water 460 years ago. Finn will be leg. It's just so perfect. The amount of blackout text, the fact it works without additions, the succinctness of the phrase, the paleontology basis, the way it implies that tetrapods only left the water and evolved in 1562. <laughs> Chef's kiss. So my uncle is a priest, and apparently can't deny when I ask him to bless something. So I now have a blessed laptop, blessed loaf of bread, and blessed underwear. I just asked him to bless this post, and he did. This post is officially the most holy post on Tumblr. Use it to banish sins from your dashboard. Wait, but it seems like these are two different URLs, so I guess they're both of their uncles is a priest, or this guy knows the priest uncle? That's a little confusing. that some people respond to any well-foreshadowed reveal with, ugh, that plot twist was so predictable, proves bad faith criticism has rotted their brains to the point they think it's bad writing if they can correctly identify information the writers were intentionally giving them. Sometimes the point of the reveal is not to shock you. Sometimes the point is anticipation of the reveal. You know it's coming, just not when, how, or what the consequences will be. And sometimes that can be so much more interesting than not seeing it coming at all. There is something so darkly comical about Tumblr potentially outliving Twitter. Tumblr, which is held together with duct tape and madness, run by three raccoons in blood-stained Yahoo hats and a handful of crabs, 
its only discernible source of income, the sale of shoelaces, from an inside joke so inside no one knows the original source anymore, and fake blue check marks. That website still lives on. Truly the cockroach of social media, and I love it for that. Watching a movie at home circa like 2001 was like, put your TV on channel 2 so the VCR will work. Open up the clamp shell case that held the VHS that was that satisfying prick. Put in the movie. God damn it, it has to be rewound. Press stop and then rewind because it's so much faster that way. Start the movie and it takes a few seconds for the movie to actually start because you rewound to the very beginning. FBI will get you if you illegally distribute or exhibit this movie. And then, because you forgot that movies are always so much louder than TV, coming soon to own on video and DVD. Quick, lower the volume, lower the volume, lower the volume, oh fuck! Okay, crisis averted. Although, these ads are kind of quiet, a little hard to hear. Better turn up the volume. THX! Posts you can hear. Between buying check marks that don't mean anything and hyping a movie that doesn't exist, I feel like Tumblr has reached a completely new level of Dadaism, where the signifiers of meaning are so complex to unravel that they have lost touch with objective reality altogether. Therefore, everything is meaningless, and also everything has meaning if you say it has. If no art makes you feel anything, make your own art and feel something, is too raw of a line to have come from a Jenna Marbles video of her painting a rainbow polka dot seahorse saying it's seahorse time on a denim jacket. It's seahorse time! Why do you people feel profound thought has to come from high places? The gutter looks at the stars too. Not only did you prove your point, but you showed an example of it in the same sentence! Sent an ask regarding a forklift. Sorry, please ignore it. Got carried away and realized that it was unorthodox. You'll know the ask I'm talking about if, when you see it. Do I need a hard hat for forklift sex? No, no, I'm sharing your note with the class. This is the funniest shit I've seen all week and I thank you for sharing. Posts that have 100k in my soul. Share their note with the school then! In Kung Fu Panda, Po is the dragon warrior, because unlike Tai Lung and Tigress, he works customer service and won't become tyrannical with power. This is the master interpretation. This is why Zuko is redeemable. He worked customer service and realized the error of his ways. This isn't even wrong. This is an incredible common trope in Chinese media. AO3's orphaning option is cool and a good idea, but mostly very fucking funny. I posted this work for fun when I was younger, and I still want people to be able to come back to it if they liked it, but now I'm an adult professional and I don't want it attached to my name. What's the word for that? Um, anonymously posting? No, I want something that indicates I murdered this story's parents. Technically, the story's parents faked their own death and disappeared to go have an office job, and that's even funnier! Oh my god, that's so dark. I love it.